Thank you. Hi, Brad. Hey, how's it going? Hello, everybody. We are live. Welcome to this Hukalo uh, TV uh, Saturday morning webinar. Our guest today is Brad Johnson. He's uh, visiting us today, going to do some, uh, some channeling for us. Um, we have a bunch of folks here in the room. And I'm going to ask Sabrina if she would like to introduce everybody. Sabrina, would you like to do that? Yes. And I first want to thank Brad for coming to visit us. And he will be channeling for us today. So I welcome him to our human colony group. So I'm sure most people are familiar with him and his work. He's been channeling for quite a long time. I join us. And I've seen several of his videos on history of Earth. Um, very, very good. Um, and I want to welcome today, let's see, Christopher, of course, Guru Dan, Rowie, Neil, Noha, Sarah, Valerie, Wendy, and of course myself. So thank you everyone for being here, for tuning in, for participating. And I want to say enjoy yourselves. Please try and be brief um, so that everyone gets a chance to ask questions. And uh, like Rowie said, um, don't ask what's your life path, as it <laughs> might take a bit too long uh, to answer those kinds of questions. And just be generous for with others. So on that note, Dan, do you have any announcements? I have some announcements for uh, for a couple of Brad's events. As soon as I get my screen to cooperate, um, Brad has uh, the Adronis Advancement Classroom. It's a free webinar this coming Sunday, which is tomorrow at noon Pacific. And he's got another event, Unleash the Extraordinary Live Channeling Event in Irvine, California at the Temple of Light on December 13th, here in just a couple of weeks for those that would like to go. On our Google Plus Events page, we have uh, Brad's website posted and his uh, session link posted for those that would uh, like to have a personal session with Brad. So those, uh, those things are available um, on the events page. So that's all I have for just at the moment. Yeah, that's about right. <clears throat> so yeah, tomorrow at noon, uh, it is the Adronis Advancement Classroom. So you guys can just go to my website. It's realitywhisperer.com. It's www.realitywhisperer.com. RealityWhisperer.com, and uh, on the front page, you can see the Adronis Advanced Classroom link there. And uh, again, it's being hosted on Google Plus Hangouts, and everybody's welcome to join. Uh, it's one of the last two free classes. So there'll be one this Sunday, and then there'll be another one uh, three weeks afterwards, because uh, it's going to happen just after the uh, Unleash the Extraordinary event in Irvine, California. So I'm just attempting to grab all the, uh, the Californians together and... Uh, come together and, and check out this event in California. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Adronis is actually going to be revealing a lot of information that has never been revealed in any video uh, or anywhere else before. It's going to be a very, very profound event. So you guys are going to be seeing some really amazing stuff happen. Uh, it's, I'm also going to be working to record the event as well, too, and then uh, eventually release it online, eventually. But so those who are fortunate enough to be in California, can check it out right away. So those are basically the two events. And of course, uh, through realitywhisperer.com, there's private sessions. I do Akashic record readings as well, too. I do light circuitry, which is, again, an advanced type of healing, uh, abundance attunements, uh, dream interpretations as well, too. I do a lot of stuff. I wear a lot of hats. So um, feel free to check it, check it out, realitywhisperer.com. Thanks again. Yeah, the only other thing that I have going on is uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Brad will be Karen Newman's guest on her radio show mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that's on Pyramid One. Pyramid One Network, yeah. Pyramid One Radio Network, awesome. Right. Yeah, uh, I don't know, uh, Roy, do you have anything you'd like to add at the, at the minute? Um, uh, there, I think uh, Roxy's story time, is that coming on later on today? 
I believe so, unless something happens between now and then. I was going to get with her this afternoon and find out if that was going to go. Yeah, early. I know her health was a little bit down. Because we had so. problems uh, last week, and I want to make sure we don't do that again. Yeah, her health was a little bit down as well. So it seems to be affecting everybody at the moment. Um, so that's at 5 p.m. EST, um, maybe later on tonight. Also, there's another event going on from the Council of Wanderers at 8 p.m. tonight. Um, uh, it's a special little announcement I said we would do for a one-off. So Ashraf, um, shout outs to you. So at 8 p.m. EST, you can uh, you can Google for the Council of Wanderers. They do a multi-channel regression session. So you can put your name into a hat, and they, if they choose you, then they can go into your life and dissect it in the way they do give you a much more clarity. So that's about the only event I had to announce. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, guys. On that note, um, I would like to now allow Brad to, I don't know how he focuses, and uh, just let him uh, get into this mode of channeling. So. Yeah, basically how it will work is, uh, I think uh, Adronis can just go right into the questions today. Um, I'm going to be. I'm working on a new uh, adjustment period with him, uh, with channeling, where a lot more of his own consciousness is coming through rather than the usual blending. Because a lot of the channeling I've done in the past uh, has just represented a blending of energies between his energies and mine, and it's kind of like a channeling soup in that way. So basically, what I've been working on uh, recently is just uh, attempting to bring Adronus through more through his own words, and so that's kind of a bit of a challenging one because I'm basically having to go a little bit deeper. Um, so that's basically how it will work today. Uh, I'm, there may be opportunities to run kind of switching back and forth where Jonas's energy is very, very strong, and then there'll be kind of a blending mode, just depending in regards to how the energies work. Uh, but yeah, if you guys do have any questions, then I'm pretty sure that uh, you know any moderation that you guys want to do it is fine. Uh, again, Jonas is very, very vast. He has a lot of information uh, that can be shared. Uh, sometimes it's scientific, sometimes it's technical, sometimes it's deeply ph philosophical. Uh, sometimes it's deeply metaphysical, sometimes it's just a sense of humor, right? So he has a very large scale a spectrum of how he interacts. Um, but he'll basically just come through uh, and uh, just give a brief introduction to himself. And, and uh, any questions you guys have? Are there going to be questions uh, for people that are watching this as well, too? Yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, yeah, any uh, questions you guys want to share, feel free to do so. And again, yeah, just, just something that's kind of, you know, decent question, just so everybody has a chance, or as many people as possible have a chance to ask a question. Uh, Adronis does have a knack for basically giving you a lot more information than what you've already asked for. So, uh, he, if you ask him a question, you know, it's not like getting a drink from a water fountain, it's like getting it from a fire hose. So, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll blast you with some really good information. Uh, depending upon the question, of course. So I will go ahead and uh, bring Adronis through. It'll just take a moment or two as I make the adjustment. And uh, thanks again, guys, for having me on Human Colony. I really appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the challenge with Adronis. Here we go. <coughs> thank you, Brad. It's a pleasure to have us here. And thank Adronis for us, too. Terra So Star Can is Major Syria Adrone We are here at this time, and we bid you greetings, and thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning in to this particular broadcast. 
being brought forward through your internet collective consciousness. What we would like all of you to do at this time is simply allow yourselves to get relaxed, get comfortable, and tune in to the vibrations of Sirius so that you may synchronize, harmonize, and align to all of the information that we have to share. Also understand that all of the information that we shall provide this day of your time is simply that of our perspective, our point of view. For all knowledge, all information, all creation itself resides within your very heart, being, and soul. We say thank you to all the conduits, to all the entities that are a part of this interaction today. Please feel free to conduct this live interaction in any way your authenticity permits. Okay, welcome, Adronis. This is Sabrina. We say hello to you. Thank you. Hello. How are you? We are wonderful. How are you? Wonderful. Um, uh, we will start with Valerie. She has a question. Yes. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Good moment. Nice to meet you. Um, I just had a question. If you have any information regarding all the new energies coming in and how we can deal with that better. Yes. The idea in that sense relating to what your planet is going through at this time is that there is a transit, a current of energy that is flowing together throughout your own particular form of, shall we say, galactic path as you make your transit further and deeper into the galaxy. The idea relating to your own star system is that it is under an incubation. Basically what this means is that there are, shall we say, prisms that are truly in a state of harmonious alignment in conjunction together with your own magnetic waves, magnetic currents, and in that sense geomagnetic positions that represent the orbits of your own planets moving together in three-dimensional vorticular patterns. And through these particular types of prisms that are taking place, they are basically absorbing a great amount of the current of the galactic transit that is coming through. As this is taking place, <clears throat> many of these particular prisms are dispensing this particular type of energy appropriately, more so for your planet. Now, the idea in that sense is that other particular planets are being compensated as well, too, for this particular type of energy, as in that sense, Earth is a populace that is, shall we say, very new on the block. And so as these particular energies are being thoroughly dispensed appropriately, you are noticing that, again, many different shifts are taking place. The idea of solar activity, the idea in that sense certain forms of lunar and planetary alignments, of course, are affecting much pertaining to the idea of mood, emotional states, etc. But more importantly in that sense, you are also noticing how the world is changing in a very strong state of acceleration. Now, it is not so much in the idea of the sequence of time. It is more so in the idea that you are evolving yourselves to such a point because the vibration of your planet is moving up into such a higher octave that you are noticing this great amount of intensity that is taking place upon your planet. The idea of it being sociological, the idea of it being political, the idea of in that sense being monetary, the idea of in that sense of many different factors relating to common life that is now becoming much more intense. As the, the energy, the transit of this particular momentum is continuously happening and accelerating, you are noticing that there is an unpeeling of information taking place, an unpeeling of energies that are taking place. And basically these particular strips of energy are being peeled off and you are now starting to see more of the world than you have ever seen before. The idea is that your own depth perception is becoming much more advanced, is becoming much more common and much more lucid through all of you. And the reason this is, is again because you are moving into different heights pertaining to vibration. So you will notice that there are, shall we say, no more secrets between anybody else anymore. And so at times this can create unsettlement. But again, it's all part of the plan. When you unpeel these layers, they are basically meant to create, shall we say, emotional adjustments. They are meant to create mental adjustments. They are meant to create physical adjustments. And so again, looking at it in the idea of that triad criteria, much of these particular types of cords, much of these particular types of receptive antenna are currently being adjusted. So again, this is why so much is happening upon your planet right now. You have reached such an acceleration where the containment is becoming a lot more lenient relating to what can be shared altogether, relating to what can be revealed altogether. So the idea in that sense of your political arenas, 
much to what is happening right now in that sense is becoming open. The reason being also is that your intelligence is increasing as well. That intelligence in that sense is now starting to move forward. Well, how is this possible, Jonas? Well, it simply happens because, again, the idea of the quantum level of vibration is now becoming much more, shall we say, vivid, much more lucid, that, again, your own particular level of information is actually being provided through light. Again, as many of you understand, the current of light holds information. And so now you are basically receiving information just by existing on Earth. And so basically on a cellular level, you are opening yourselves up through, shall we say, advanced transmutational algorithms that are now starting to move yourself into higher information aspects of the field. And so this is in that sense what is increasing intelligence. Now again, this is basically why many of you are discovering loopholes within much of your society about what has been hidden from you for quite some time. And now you are all discovering it. Again, the internet is a very, very po positive creation relating to this aspect, that the information gathering of your collective consciousness digitally is in that sense a great benefactor to helping yourselves move further into how you communicate, how you connect together as one, and how you gather information. So again, you are moving through a very, very critical time where many things are on the change, many things are on the horizon. What we will also say is that within the next year of your time, within the idea of the fall of 2016, you have already heard another particular channel say that around the fall time of 2016, everything will change. This is correct. You will basically be experiencing a new earth unlike anything you've experienced before within one year's time. So in that sense, you will start to see the unpeeling of this transition taking place day by day, week by week, month by month. But you're going to be seeing a new earth where there will be the beginning phases of what you would know as a unified human cooperative that is actually going to start taking place. There is going to be, through that time, the peak time where there is less governmental influence and there is more people-powered influence that there will be the start of foundations. We have represented the idea of the year of 2016 as the year of illumination. And basically this is giving you the idea that you are pointing light, you are shedding light on certain areas that have been shrouded in shadow. And they are now coming into the light. Illumination is taking place. We have referred to the year of 2015 as the year of integration. As you understand it is a year of contraction. And again this is where much of the intensity has taken place. But within the next one year of your time, you will be looking at a very different Earth. We thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice moment. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Adronis. Thank you for being with us today. Um, I myself, as well as many yeah, others... Who are we speaking with? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Wendy. Hi, Brad. Hello, Hi, Adronis. Wendy. Many of us, including myself, feel, feel um, a lot of connections with the Sirius star systems. Yes. And um, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on these star systems, the beings that um, are in these star systems, and how, how is it that we seem to feel a specific special connection to so many of the um, civilizations from these star systems is, and uh, was there like an agreement to come here to assist us with this ascension, um, that, that sort of idea? Yes, we thank you for your question. The idea in that sense is that through Sirius, you are basically interconnected through our own, shall we say, gravitational relationship. Basically what that means is that your star and the binary star in that sense that is your partner star that you know as Nibiru in that sense is interconnected together with the Canis Majoris constellation magnetically. And so in that sense, that is giving you an association right there pertaining to the idea of magnetics as it represents neighbors, as it represents family. Now, if we were to look at just Sirius within the Canis Majoris constellation, that you have what is known as Sirius A, to which we reside. We exist within the star of Sirius A as starlight. In Sirius B, you also have, in that sense, seven, 14 different planets, our apologies, 14 different planets that exist within Sirius B. Sirius A, you have 17. Sirius C has one particular planet that in that sense is much more of a dwarf-like planet. Now again, these are, shall we say, the triad cluster, but they work in a different form of arrangement in regards to, shall we say, periodic alignments. 
But again, much in regards to your cultures, through the idea of your Dogon tribes, through the idea of your Egyptian, through the idea of your Atlantean, through the idea of Sumeria, through the idea of the Inca, etc. There are several different cultures that have had interactions together, specifically with the Syrians and with the Pleiadians. Now, in a sense, relating to the idea of the Syrians and what type of life exists throughout our particular star cluster. The idea in that sense is that, yes, there is humanoid life. There is amphibious life as well, too. There are beings in that sense that are much more aquatic, that would in that sense appear fish-like, or in that sense even jellyfish-like as well, too. It is a very, very rich tapestry of life throughout the idea of Sirius A and Sirius B. Again, as we represent ourselves, that to be light. But you would also understand that through Sirius A and through Sirius B, there are beings that you would know as lion or feline beings that also exist. There are also beings very similar that look like what you would know as Zetans or the, ba the beings that you know as greys that also exist as well too. There are again other different types of proportionally different shaped humanoids that do exist through Sirius A and through Sirius B. There are also other beings that look very much like your Sasquatch. There are also insectoid races, again reptilian and reptoid races as well too, that exist both through Sirius A and Sirius B throughout this particular time. So again, we do have a very rich tapestry pertaining to energies of that nature. You would also understand that a creature that is very popular upon your planet in regards to being adored is that of the dolphin race, and in that sense, cetacean life forms are also very, very common throughout Sirius, as well as within the Pleiades. So again, this gives you a little bit of an understanding relating to the type of life forms that do exist between Sirius A and Sirius B. Does that help you? Are you done, Wendy? Wendy, is your microphone working? Wendy? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, yes, thank you. That was a very good explanation. I appreciate that very much. Thank you very much, Wendy. Sarah? <coughs> Hello, Jonas. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Sarah, and I believe I there was a attempt to connect to you at one point by myself. Right. to channel you and the energy came down and yes. it was just so powerful that I had to let the energy go. Yes, we often do that. <laughs> well, I just wanted to, to understand that that actually happened and it was you guys. Yes, well again, here's the thing, is that really the channel that is communicating with us right now is in that sense appropriately adjusted in regards to what you would know as intense masculine energy. And that is precisely what the Adronus energy represents. Now, this is only in that sense a particular type of pairing of energy in regards to what we truly exist as. So the idea in that sense of the Adronus energy is a representative, a representational energy of the energy of Ra. Now, Ra in that sense simply represents the idea of the sun essence that exists within the star of Sirius. We understand that many in that sense may be familiar with the being known as Ra that was commonly channeled in the books that you would know as the Law of One. We do have associations together with this being, but we are referring to a different octave relating to the Ra of energy in that sense. It is more of what you would refer to as the blue-silver-white luminescent essence connection that represents our energy. And again, there is also the feminine counterpart that represents our energy, which is known as Rayard. And that Rayar, in that sense, for many of you, is a little less intense in regards to Adronus. <clears throat> she is much more, in that sense, more in the feminine characteristics. And so many people, in that sense, can have the opportunity to also connect with her as well. But in that sense, utilizing our particular energy in the masculine form requires a very deep necessity state to ground. So the more that you are able to basically root yourself very deeply, right to the center of your earth, also being able to open your crown chakra in your imagination approximately ten and a half centimeters wide at least being able to bring forward that particular type of opening within the center of your crown chakra and being able to in that sense feel that the inside of your head the inside of your crown is not shall we say containing a physical brain or anything pertaining to physical matter that you are basically opening up a crystalline light body as you do this. This basically helps with the particular state of adjustment. And you are going to imagine a bluish, silverish, white light 
that will actually be coming in through the top of your crown chakra. Now again, if that is a little bit challenging for you to imagine, we would just suggest that utilizing the idea of what you would know as a very light aquamarine or very light turquoise type of light. That is again approximately 10 to 10 and a half centimeters thick. And being able to imagine that this is pouring into the opening of your crown chakra. And that as you see the opening, you are seeing your crystalline matrix. As your crystalline matrix in that sense appropriately adjusts, the veins within your body are again being seen as crystalline tubes. And so again, what is happening is that you are, shall we say, charging the nadi roots, often referred to in your Indian culture, in your Sanskrit culture, in regards to the idea of the nadi roots, which represent energetic veins that flow throughout your entire body. As you imagine that this turquoise aquamarine light is flowing through your body, you are now opening the apertures to the center of the bottom of your feet, approximately what you would know as three inches wide at least. <clears throat> as this takes place, you will now imagine that the knotty roots are now starting to extend themselves through the bottom orifices of your feet, the apertures and that they are now starting to descend deeper and deeper into the ground ethereally. And as you start to imagine that these roots are connecting deeper etherically, that they are now becoming physicalized roots, and that these physicalized roots are now connecting to the singularity of your planet, the center point pertaining to that of Mother Earth. And now you are basically, in that sense, in a state of grounding. You are now allowing that energy to flow through you. And the whole idea is just being able to keep yourself calm, keeping yourself relaxed, and keeping yourself into a beautiful aspect of love. This is one particular suggestion we can give to how you are able to successfully ground your energy with our consciousness so that we may blend together with your being and integrate your own energetic components as seen fit that will appropriately allow you to have interactive conversation with the Adronis Collective. And would you wish for me to do that? If you wish, if it is in that sense authentic for you to do so, why not? Very well. And I have one more question. Now, I, basically, what we gave you is not just for yourself, but for everybody. For everyone, yes. Yes. Um, at one point, I was doing a meditation, and somehow I got shot up to Sirius. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure which planet. And there was amphibious-looking beings and humanoid-looking beings. Yes, this would be what you would know as the third planet of Sirius A. Sirius A. Now, what is my It is a co-creation between what you would know as the amphibious beings in that sense, humanoid beings. Well, your connection would be that in that sense of a family relationship that has taken place. Now, again, understand that there are many different aspects to your soul. Now, here's where many people get confused. People may say, well, Adronis, I feel like I'm very, very Syrian. Yes, a part of you is. That doesn't mean that all of you is. Understand that your soul, in that sense, would be likened to water drops. And basically, there are aspects where you have very large drops that are, in that sense, placed forward into your own soul matrix. And this can represent Syrian energy. However, that is not all there is to you. So the idea, in that sense, is that one of these particular drops that you are experiencing holds a, shall we say, rapport energetic relating to the idea of the amphibious and humanoid beings, humanoid beings that appear very Nordic in that sense, to which we once existed upon the third planet of Sirius A, that are again forming a relationship together with you because you hold the proxy pertaining to the energetics that they represent. And therefore, when they are communicating with you, the veil in that sense has been removed. And so through the removing of this veil, you are now much more intimate in regards to their connections vibrationally as they connect with you. Thank you for that. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Noha. Noha, are you there? Okay. Um. <coughs> We'll let the next person go, Roy. Yeah, no, hi. If you log in, we ask, we we'll get you to ask your question after me. Yeah, she she um, typed the question, but I have to read it. So go ahead. Okay. Um, greetings, Adronis. Um, my name is Roy. Roy. Yes. Hello. 
Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's a real honor and pleasure. Um, I'm a bit of a curious cat, and I would like to you know a little a bit more. Cat? Yes, I do. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I like cat life. <laughs> so, um, I'm curious about your experiences as a Syrian yourself. Well, um, I understand that our particular type of experiences is that we have, in that sense, interacted together with three different density planes that exist within the Syrian mm -hmm. spectrum what you would know as the fourth, fifth, and sixth density, to which we now reside within the sixth density as starlight consciousness. Now, the idea in that sense is that much in pertaining to our culture is that we are, shall we say, very much connected as one mind. It was not so much in the idea that we held individualistic co continuity very strongly, even though it was somewhat possessed in that particular way. But the idea in that sense is that very much similar to how you would understand the living of the monks, throughout many of your mountains, throughout many of your, in that sense, solitude-based terrains, would be very much in regards to describing our culture in the idea of the fourth and fifth density. And so basically our own particular type of interaction was to connect more deeper to the Creator. We have also served together as particular types of liaisons that have functioned together in regards to certain alliances. You may refer to our particular type of alliance of that of the Association of Worlds or an interstellar alliance as well too and that we have, in that sense, interacted with a great majority of different beings, not only within this universe, but within many others, and that they have taught us many things, and we have taught them many things as part of equivalent exchange. And so through many of these particular types of practices, and the way that we exist as a particular culture, no one is left behind. There is no idea, the idea of what you would refer to as trouble, or shall we say, hardships. That really doesn't exist on our planet in regards to when we were existing in the fourth density, fifth density, and now again in the sixth density. We are now again as part of the sixth density hemisphere, representing that of the star of Sirius A, connected in a way that really is indescribable. It is basically like seeing a drop being added to the ocean, and that that drop in that sense really does not have an individualized complex, however it can choose to. And basically that is how our interaction, our relationship with each other works that we are in that sense a light hemisphere of monadic consciousness. Monadic consciousness connecting together and associating together with many other different ways of life, not just through what you would know as entity genome structures, but also mm -hmm. what you would know as planetary, star, galactic clusters that also exist in different fabrics of ethereal consciousness that in that sense interact together with us much like how liquid touches liquid. And so this is primarily in regards to our particular function, is that we are simply understanding more and more about how creation works, about how everything is connected together with us. We are, in that sense, also able to express this through certain levels of artwork, as you would understand, that the artwork in that sense is, shall we say, holographic. We are able to, in that sense, bend the fabrics of space and time because it works more for us rather than believing that we work for it. And we are able to, therefore, traverse many of these particular types of energetics and in that sense create pictures, create the idea of living energies that are basically associating our own particular moods, our own particular ways about what we are receiving to exchange collectively, not just through our own hemisphere, but through hemispheres elsewhere. And that is in that sense a particular type of art that we utilize. We also in that sense associate together with music, but music in that sense that is a little bit more different than your type of music. We do not hold an electric guitar, for example. It would basically burn up in our star in that way. Just kidding. <laughs> but the idea in that sense is that the flow of energy all contains music. Everything pertaining to motion, yes. everything yes. pertaining to expression holds music. And that in that sense is therefore a part of our communication. Not only in that sense being able to communicate our ideas, but doing it in a very beautiful way of expressing through the idea of sound. And that in that sense is our corroboration relating to a music accord. Oh, that's, I mean, that's an absolutely awesome. And I could go off on so many of those uh, things you said as well. But we the question so, yeah. I wanted to follow up on that was when you yourself was experiencing <laughs> a linear time aspect on the planets, the various planets are serious when you're yes. going through your nows. Did your species go through a similar awakening as what humanity is going through now? Or was it, how different was it or how similar was it? 
it was, in that sense, a different type of planet relating to many other planets that were, shall we say, going through different changes. Now, understand that there have been what you know as ancient Syrian civil wars, that there have actually been civil wars between much of the cultures between Sirius A and Sirius B. And in that sense, that has, in that sense, long been extinguished. But in regards to much of our particular type of interaction is that we did not get involved with the idea of the wars. We were basically attempting to send love to many other particular beings that were, in that sense, still attempting to understand who they were and realizing that they were buying very much into the idea of the separation illusion. And so our particular aspect were to be as mediators, were to be, in that sense, agents of creation, to being able to assist others relating to the stagnation that they were feeling and feeling that they needed to bear arms and feel that they had to create differentiations of opinions based upon the idea of physicalized force. And so much in regards to how that occurred was through the idea of different ambassadorial means to create third-party arrangements. And through these particular types of third-party arrangements, we allowed, again, truces to be discovered, to be brought forward with many of these particular races, because many of it was about territory. Much of it, in that sense, was about biology, about genetic, as so well, as, similarities as, there, well as technology. Yeah. Yeah. So again, much of this in that sense has come to much more of an illuminated structure at this particular time. But for some great deal of time, there were in that sense much infighting, not only through Sirius, but also through the Pleiades, throughout other particular forms of areas, such as Ursa Minor as well. So again, there have been, shall we say, certain skirmishes that we have personally assisted, not only within our own quote-unquote home territory, but in other territories as well too, where we functioned as, shall we say, goodwill ambassadors to helping others understand their connections to each other. So I, I love the advice of the mediation role, and do you think that that's something that could help Earth with its ascension yeah. as well? Yes, this is precisely what many of you are doing at this time right mm -hmm. now, is working together through mediation. We understand that many of you in that sense are feeling that you are being tested in certain ways mm -hmm. about how aggressive, how angry, how frustrated people are, and feeling that, oh my goodness, what is happening here? What can be done? I'm attempting to not get angry myself with these people. Our particular advice to you is saying, see them as the creator. See them as yourselves. See another entity directly in front of you as, again, another drop of the ocean to which you also belong. And so the more that you see yourselves through them, the more that this will assist you in understanding what they're going through because it is very important to know what they're going through. It is very, very important to understand them in this particular way because that is part of their frustration that no one understands them, that I'm always feeling like I'm being ignored or that I'm being pushed aside. So the more that you are able to open yourself up, hold space for them, and listen, that is the key ingredient to mediation. It's a beautiful message. Thank you, Adronis. Uh, we have we many more you. here, so I'll pass along. Thank you. My love to you. Hello, Adronis. This is Sabrina. I'm going to ask the question that Noha was going to ask. Yes. Um, she said, I was watching A Course in Miracles and she was, and I was wondering, um, those who pass on to the other side, does the ego still stay with the spirit for the next incarnation? Or if does it are, stay here? If you're referring to full transit upliftment, no. The idea is that what keeps you grounded within the astral realms is the idea of an ego individualistic quality. And that is basically what keeps you together confined in that particular way. It is not in that sense meant to be anything negative or positive. It's simply just the idea that when many of you, in fact, have passed away, many of you can't even believe that you've passed away. Many of you are in that sense recreating another particular type of reality that holds some type of duplication to the familiarity of your own emotional states. It is the idea of what you would know as your ego complex. The idea of the id, the superego, the ego, etc., are all still functioning together in a type of climax that represents the idea of reproduction pertaining to life. So, in order for one to really, in that sense, truly move back into oneness, to the connection to source consciousness, would be the idea, in that sense, of realizing a state of upliftment by letting go of themselves, by completely surrendering. And in order for that to happen, there must be the invitation to acknowledgement and forgiveness. Being able to understand that you are more than the idea of the problems that you have inherited through value. It is being able to substitute the value that represented your feelings of your own contamination, feelings of your own limitation. 
being able to put that energy aside, forgiving that energy and liberating that energy. And that all that remains is the true authenticity of yourself. Now, this is, again, why we are saying that it is about authenticity. Here's the thing. It's not so much about excitement. It's much more about authenticity. Now, excitement is an aspect pertaining to the idea of authenticity, yes. But the whole idea in that sense, it's not always about following positive energy. Positive energy functions as a counterbalance to the idea of negative energy. And so basically what you are attempting to do is creating a harmony between the idea of what you still feel is a conflicting nature within yourself. And again, this is what many people discover when they pass on. They are still living in this particular reality where there is some type of peril, where they are still, in that sense, emotionally attached to certain situations. Now understand that when you are going out of body, you basically exist primarily within the viewpoint of what holds emotional disarray. So basically what that means is if one person is, in that sense, passed away and is emotionally distraught about leaving their family behind, and if this basically becomes the primary connection to, shall we say, their emotional imbalances, that is the viewpoint that you will see the most. Now, this basically correlates to your living reality. The reason why you have much more focus in this particular life is because of ego-based personality. And this is why many of you in that sense are only getting fragments of other particular types of multidimensional lives that you have. So basically the idea of you being very, very much tethered to the earth plane is the illusion of what you have created of being a singularity, of being what you would know as an entity. So when an energy, an entity, passes on and leaves their body, when they are able to withdraw themselves from the idea of feeling that they are no good, that they have no value, and they are able to put that aside and look at it for what it is. Being able to acknowledge it in its fullest essence, being able to forgive that energy and release that. Now you are basically seeing the illumination effect coming into your reality. Now you are able to move up that light tunnel and now you're able to receive your life review. And now that you have received your life review and you have gone through much of that particular type of shedding, whatever you decide to do is up to you. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> she had a follow-up question of how how do you see her ego? I don't know if you can answer that or. Well, again, that is a very complex question because your okay. ego, in that sense, is many-faced. It does not have, in that sense, one particular aspect. And again, we would not look at it in the idea that we only see one side of your ego because that is a limiting factor. The idea, in that sense, is if you were able to look at a sphere. A sphere has no faces. A sphere is simply that of a smooth, beautiful geometry. That would represent the idea of your ego. The idea in that sense that everything is smooth and that through the sphere an infinite aspect of yourself truly is available. Because all the ego is, is a grounding device to helping you anchor yourself and live through the continuity of this experiment, of this game that represents Earth of this game that represents incarnation. The ego does not have to be a bad thing. All of you have an ego, every single one of you. You can't kill it, you can't destroy it, you can't escape from it, you can't run from it. It's not what the point is. We ourselves have a particular type of ego ourselves in regards to the type of functionality that we have through incarnation. Soon as you're in incarnation, you have an ego. Simple fact of the matter. So the whole idea in that sense is that you are becoming lighter with yourself relating to feeling that you are dumping everything on the ego. The only reason the ego is like it is is because of the amount of energetic dumpage that you have placed upon it. To give it the idea, I feel I'm worthless. I feel I'm no good. I feel I can't do this job. I feel I can't do this career. I feel I'm not able to express myself in this way. I feel I don't like this person. I feel I can't do a relationship, etc. All of these are now being incubated together into the ego. <clears throat> the ego is just reminding you, this is all of the energy you put into me. This is me serving as a memory device to helping you hold memory, to helping you understand what you have placed within yourself. The ego can be a very powerful tool for you. It is not your enemy. It is meant to be in alliance with you. 
But the reason why it has been so out of control is because you have given it the idea of great deals of contradiction because the energy you have placed upon it is the dichotomy of how you see yourself through all of these different energetic currents and that all of these energetic currents are now starting to create knots. And now the ego is basically attempting to assimilate all this information. It is in that sense a very strong masculine based grounding tool. And so now it is getting these particular kinks and it doesn't even realize it has these kinks because you've been enforcing so much energy upon the ego on this, that and the other thing. So the only way that you're ever going to bring alliance to the ego is being able to clean up a lot of that energetic focus that you have put upon the ego. That's why it acts so outraged in certain times and saying that, will you get your head together? Will you do this? Will you do that? It's basically telling you, look at how many kinks are within my matrix. Look at all of this particular type of mess. It's like walking into a bedroom and everything is on the floor. Everything is on the wall. Something is hanging down from the ceiling. That can be the idea in that sense, a disoriented ego because the user is putting all of this particular type of energetic programming into the room of the ego that now it is creating this catastrophe, that all of this debris is everywhere. So basically what we're suggesting to you is be brave, grab a mop, a broom and a dustpan and go inside that room and start cleaning up your ego and start cleaning up in that way of saying that I am valued, I am worth it, I am capable of doing this and utilizing the idea of positive reinforcement to basically take a deep breath and go inside that room. And you have a lot of acknowledging, you have a lot of forgiving to do. And as this starts to happen, now the room starts to get cleaned up. Now you start to go inside a room where the ego is sparkling, shining, because you have given yourself permission to connect with yourself on that ego level and have a conversation and being able to work together with the ego so that the ego can now be your ally. All the ego wants to do is be filled in, filling the ego in and saying, where are you going? What's happening here? If you see your ego as a best friend, as a family member, as someone who you hold dear to yourself, this is part of the ego alliance because now you are communicating with the ego and you are reaching consensus pertaining to all actions that you take and that is what is going to allow a great upliftment to take place. When you make decisions, let it be decisions that create consensus. Let it be something that your ego is good with and that your heart, heart, ego is good with. So basically being able to take the ego, take the heart, put them together, create that hemisphere of transformation, of amalgamation, and of connection and cooperation. And this is what's going to allow your decisions to become much more of a singular path to follow that you are walking. When you are not in consensus, you basically fragment the path. And now many of these different veins of avenues come together and now you become confused because you are making decisions based upon inner conflict. And that is where things can, in that sense, rebound to you. And again, the ricochet, the rebound of that messy room is now coming back to you. Maybe an underwear from the top of the ceiling falls on your head, for example. But that's all giving you the idea of this fragmented understanding relating to making choices that are creating inner conflict. As long as you do that, you will continue to scatter yourself. You will continue to add more mess to the room of the ego. When you are able to reach consensus on every decision that you make, the room can become more clean. We thank you once again for your question. Thank you for that answer. Um, now, this is uh, one of my questions. As this is Sabrina. Um, hello. Yes. <laughs> As you read the energies right now, in in terms of a window, um, how do you see first contact? When Again, the idea of what you would know as global first contact in that way to where in that sense there is a true recognition on a global level to where everybody in that sense is able to have the full official, shall we say, connection together with other beings from other planets would be approximately around the time of 2050. So again, that is, shall we say, give or take. It all really depends upon you. Sometimes that energy can come a little bit earlier, sometimes it can come a little bit later. 
it all depends on you. But if we were able to find a middle point, an average in that particular way, it would be around the time of 2050. Now basically what's happening within your next couple of years is the idea of the releasing of particular types of documentation that is giving you more of the understanding that other civilizations exist. And that throughout that particular time there will be small groups that will have certain forms of interactions with extraterrestrial beings. Very much similar to what you would know as the hybrid beings, the beings that you would know as the Yayel. Now again, that's one particular civilization. There are also many other civilizations that are going to be eventually working together with you as well. But the Yayel in that sense will be one of the primary civilizations that will be doing a lot more of the delegations through many of you. Now again, basically this is what is taking place upon your time, is that you are moving up a stepladder. You are taking it one rung at a time. It is more so in the idea that one of the first amounts of announcements will be the idea of the discovery of another planet that holds life. The idea in that sense of microbacterial organisms flowing upon that, upon that planet to give an understanding that yes, other civilizations exist, or shall we say other civilizations within a microbial level exist, to again ease the people in that sense who are not used to hearing this information with a little bit of convenience. It will then move up into the idea of second density life forms, the idea in that sense that yes, perhaps certain forms of life existed on this exoplanet or even a planet within your own star system, for the example of Mars. Mars itself has little rodents, has little insects, has little arachnids in that sense that are scurrying around its surface and within its surface as well too. So again, there will be certain forms of quote-unquote disclosure that will happen that represent a baby step one rung at a time as it relates to disclosure. As that starts to unfold, there will be more of the admittance that other civilizations exist. This may also exist through the idea of what you would know as your own SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, that they are in that sense going to publicly admit that they have had certain forms of broadcasts being received through their own transmissions and that this will eventually be admitted to the public as well too. There will also be again other particular discoveries within your exoplanets that will be resolved, that will be in that sense divulged as well too. That they have actually been able to discover cities, other particular types of technologies. They have also been able to discover orbitable platforms orbiting around these particular types of planets as well too. You would also look in the idea of the example of what has been shared relating to a very large megalithic structure that other people feel that it is in that sense just the idea of the array of different comets. No, it is a mega structure that has actually been discovered. So many of these particular things, shall we say, are going to be divulged to the public within your next few years, starting around the time of 2016 up to 2020, another particular type of pairing of information up around the time of 2025, 2030, 2035, moving all the way up to 2050, where there will be, in that sense, a high probability of a very large global contact. Again, 2050 is what we refer to as the average point. So that would be around the time of the average, to where approximately forms of civilizations will contact you on a global level. Okay, thank you. And I was just wondering if you had any message for me. We are receiving, shall we say, many different angelic intelligences that are connecting with you. In that sense, they are referring, don't worry so much. Play more so with what reality gives you. Connect more with the friends that bring you joy. Connect more with the family that brings you together. Connect more with what life brings you through the nature that you see. Begin to follow more of your authentic path that will allow you to connect more so to jobs, careers, profession, that brings you a true heightening of your ability to serve. That is the message that we are receiving. Thank you uh, for that. Um, and on that note, Neil is next. Hello, Jonas. This is Neil. Yes, hello, Neil. Hello, much love to you. We thank you. Um, thank you could you give me your, um, your description of what a twin flame is, please? Well, a twin flame, in that sense, can often be very misunderstood upon your planet. It does not always relate to a romantic relationship. And again, many of you feel that, oh, I want to find my twin flame. 
understand that there are already many people upon your planet in that sense that have very deep connections with you that could be defined as a twin flame. All a twin flame really represents is one that is helping you to identify a lesson that you are discovering for yourself. So that can be a family member, that can be a best friend, that could be a partner in that particular way, but it doesn't always have to be. So when you're looking at the idea of a twin flame, we ask you to look at the analogy that is being shared here. One flame right here, another flame right here. Doesn't mean they're manifesting lips and going kissy kissy. It's basically giving you the idea that this other particular flame is showing you a different variation of yourself, showing you another aspect of yourself, being able to look at a mirror of yourself and realize, oh my goodness, there's something about this person that I connect with, that I resonate with, with very, very strongly, and that I'm connecting with this particular twin flame because they're giving me an understanding about how I see myself. And this can lead to the idea of many challenges and many lessons because they may act, and again, very, very differently relating to certain situations that you probably felt you were basically almost identical with. But again, this isn't the case. There will be certain similarities relating to the twin flame, but it doesn't always have to do with, shall we say, what we have in common. It is more so on the idea that we resonate, that we align, that we interlock. And as you interlock and align, you are discovering aspects of each other that you are learning from. So it is the idea in that sense that it is an individual that comes along within your life that helps you to understand more about yourself that can lead to the purification of challenges that you are going through and being able to acknowledge, understand certain lessons that are being brought forward through the idea of the conveyance pertaining to that energy of the twin flame. Soulmates, in that sense, can often be defined as something else. Soulmates can represent the idea of a divine connection a connection that in that sense can be more so in the idea of a romantic relationship, but it doesn't always have to be. It can relate to the idea of family as well too. There really is no clear definition to the idea of what you would know as a romantic relationship other than the idea of referring to a romantic partner in that particular way. But many of you in that sense put a lot of these buzzwords, these labels upon these things and saying that it needs to come together in a certain way. Unfortunately, no, it doesn't. Because you have labeled something a certain way does not mean that that is the limitation of the label. It is just something that you have placed upon it to give an understanding that you don't quite acknowledge yet. And so understand that there is a very strong universe within the idea of a potential partner, with a potential friend, with a potential connection that you have together with those individuals that are only attempting to show you more of yourself through them however you wish to term it, be it a soulmate, be it a twin flame, be it a romantic partner, be it a loving family member, whatever it may be, someone who holds a very strong personal connection to you. Our particular advice would don't worry so much about the labels. Enjoy about what's in front of you. Enjoy the nature about this person that is directly in front of you, whom you connect with. And wherever it decides to go, simply be mindful of that. Be aware. Don't worry if they're a twin flame. Don't worry about a soulmate. They're pretty words. What's very, very important is that you're seeing the nature of the relationship that flows through you right now through connection and let that go in any particular way it wishes to so that that person can assist together with you and the both of you are going on adventures together and getting to know yourselves through this particular connection all together. Thank you. So one thing I'm curious about, um, would you... Could you say that a twin flame could be your incarnation also? Yes. It can truly be yourself because basically you're discovering your own inner twin flame as well too. Many of you notice that there in that sense may be other personalities within yourself. Have you all noticed this? That there's actually other personalities within yourself? You may discover this as your own conscience. You may discover this in that sense as other particular people that are running wild within myself. This is very true because you can in that sense actually associate different soul energies together with yourself that have different personality complexes that take their turn in associating personality complexes with yourself or personality images with yourself. So what you can actually do is create personal inner twin flame interrelationship interconnection together through yourselves. So if you feel that little voice inside your head, that conscience that's there, that can be, in that sense, a definition of another personality archetype within yourself. And you may discover that there are, in that sense, several personality archetypes. This is mainly what people, in that sense, with ADHD have. 
people with ADHD in that sense actually have multiple personalities within themselves. Nothing to do with anything in regards to dysfunction. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about being able to discover harmony. And so what you're basically doing is you're amalgamating many of these aspects together with you. This conduit himself in that sense can at times feel like he has other particular people within himself and representing the idea of shifting of personality archetype. This is very common. This is not uncommon. We want to let you all know that right now. People in that sense who have had autism, ADHD, schizophrenia, etc., are all basically discovering other aspects of themselves within themselves to create a state of harmony. There is nothing quote unquote wrong with them. They're basically just attempting to recreate an aspect where they amalgamate, where this can actually speak as one voice. And again, through the different arrangements of what society has termed as disorders, represent the different themes and branches that they are connecting with to create harmony through all of those aspects. There are no dysfunctional people. There are no people with disorders. It's all about the idea of coming into natural arrangement, natural connection, so that you are now able to amalgamate and create consensus with yourself to discover how you can live yourself authentically in the best ways that you can once you have created harmony within. Beautiful. Okay, thank you very much, Adonis. Much love to you. We thank you as well. Much love to you as well. Sure. Um, we are happy to take one last question before we conclude today. <clears throat> Hello, Adronis. Adronis, I love you so much. My name is Sean. Um, Hello, Sean. I just want to say I, I love you so much, and I love the conduit that you're speaking through so much, too. Um, my question would be, uh, you said that there's a, a big shift that's going to be happening uh, coming up to the year of 2016, the end. Yes, yes. Um, and you're living through that shift right now. <clears throat> Yes, and um, I'm just curious, socially, how is how is that going to be different than what's happening socially now? There will be a lot more, shall we say, angry people around that particular time in that sense who have been very much kept in the dark, relating to everything that's been happening within their governments, relating to their political agendas, relating to the idea of sociological behavior, relating to the idea in that sense of monetary discussion, etc., education. There will be people who will be very frantic. In fact, you're discovering right now that many people on the planet are very frantic, are very, very upset, are very angry. So basically, your particular connection, your responsibility, should you decide to accept it, is again to bring mediation to those particular type of people because this will heat up. It's not going to cool down yet. It won't be cooling down for quite some time. Right now, you're in the furnace. You're in the feeling of the fire right now. And people in that sense are getting upset because they're discovering how the government has lied to them. How many different forms of agencies are keeping this particular type of information or attempting to keep this information from much of the public. And now as much of this is getting leaked out right now, more people are getting outraged. So basically this is where you come together to attempt to cool the fire. You're not trying to extinguish the fire, but you're bringing it into a level that in that sense is bearable. And so that is basically what you are going through. So a lot of sociological change in that sense will be much more uproar within your internet. The idea in that sense of much more information being divulged, much more people sharing their particular distaste for everything that has been taking place, be it online or through your own physical reality, through your own television, through your own media, etc. So again, there will be a lot of intense times to the idea of the social behavior. Now what we are basically saying here, relating to everything that is taking place, is that everything that is taking place upon your planet sociologically is all part of an upbringing. Now, if you decide to put so much energy within the media, then basically what you're doing is you're only looking through a looking glass relating to what reality truly is. Because not any aspect of your media, be it mainstream media, be it alternative media, be it grassroots media, can tell you what the world is about. It's not possible. As long as you use the conveyance of media, you are looking through a looking glass. You are simply seeing it through a prism. So the whole idea here is not to feel that you are being so caught up in the idea of mass media in all its forms. If you truly want to understand what the world is, see it for yourself. That is the only way that you're going to get a broadened perspective because people will come up to you and say, this world's a mess. This world is so cruel. This world is so awful. 
it does have some of those particular elements, yes. However, you're only seeing something through a looking glass. You're not seeing the whole picture here. And there is much more to your world that is so beautiful that you're not allowing yourself to see. What causes people to feel that they have something they see that is awful? Because it's doing this. It's waving its hands. It's going crazy. It's doing somersaults. It's doing backflips. And all you're doing is focusing on this particular type of attention that is so sporadic. And you're missing everything else that's over here that is so beautiful. So it is very, very important that as long as you see the world through the media's eyes, you adopt an archetype pertaining to perception, relating to the idea of it being fragmented, relating to the idea of it being negative in that particular way. You've adopted that criticism based upon what the trance-based programming is attempting to tell you. And that's how you see the world. If you see the world in that way, that's your choice. It's for you. You are the viewer here. Nobody can tell you differently. However, it's important to understand that you can take those bifocal lenses off that represent that looking glass, and now you see the world in a completely different light. Because as long as you're able to interact together with your world by living authentically, by making your choices through the aspects that represent consensus and walking that authentic path, you are going to see a very different world. So again, we would ask you that much of your conventional technology, much of your modern technology, much of your media in that sense, are bifocal lenses that you're putting on and thinking, this is the world. What other people are saying, this is the world. No, it's not. That is a type of world that you have subscribed to to give the idea of feeling that that is how you want to see this world. You can take those glasses off and you can start to walk around. And you can now see a world that is directly in front of you that is more amazing, more beautiful than you can imagine because, truly, 95 to 97% of your planet is that type of world. We thank you. Thank you, Adronis, for being here today, for speaking to us. Um, we are all thankful for you taking your time and Brad taking his time to come here and be here. Well, we thank you very much, but here is the thing. We don't exist in time. I know. Basically, in that sense, we thank all of you for our wonderful, grandiose moment together with all of you today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who have tuned into this broadcast through your internet collective consciousness. Thank you again. Farewell for this timing, and we now return to the conduit. We will speak to you again, as now is forever, and all is one. Goodbye. Oh, namaste. Beautiful. Thank you. And, and again, please, um, Brad's uh, website is realitywhisper.com, and I posted it there on the side. It's also on the uh, Google Plus page, should you forget um, where to look. Or you can just search Google for Brad Johnson, and yeah. you will find it if you yeah, forget. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sabrina, and thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, again, this is just uh, you know a tip of the iceberg about what Adronis can do for you. Um, Adronis has helped thousands of people all over the world for the past seven years, and I've seen so much transformation helping with other people, and I've seen so much transformation helping through myself as well, too, because it's not just the idea of other people receiving this information, this benefit. Uh -huh. I'm receiving as much benefit just as much as everybody else as well, too. So if you guys really want to experience Adronis much more personally, again, that's something you can do through real realitywhisperer.com, through the sessions I offer, through the courses that are there as well. There's a lot of great stuff, so feel free to check out the website. But I had a great time today on Human Colony, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, we were wondering if you would be willing to take, you know, maybe like four questions just of you. Oh, yeah, we could do some quick ones. Okay. Uh, Rowie? Oh, I should have written it down, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I started doing admin work and then I forget the question. Um, yeah, Brad, because we are a channel, uh, a kind of collective of uh, up and coming channelers, as you could say, um, Human Colony is kind of becoming one of the biggest channeling collectives. Uh, do you have any? Oh, I just kind of want like your personal experience. You said you've been doing this seven years now. How did you first get into channeling yourself? 
Yeah, it uh, actually started with a science fiction novel that I was creating, and I wanted to do research on this novel mm -hmm. and get an understanding relating to the extraterrestrial presence. I wanted to find out what was really going on, and so I did a lot of re online research and was discovering uh, my connection to spirituality because seven years ago, after seven years ago, or before seven years ago, I was not a spiritual person at all. I wasn't mm -hmm. into psychic ability. I wasn't into any of this stuff. Uh, and so I just started researching everything, and everything just opened up. It was like a vault that just opened up, a filling cup of knowledge. A lot of information was coming in through, and it just captivated me. And so I put the book aside, and I wanted to go more into meditation. So I was looking more deeply into meditation at first. I just went into a library, took out a small meditation book, did a yeah. lot of the exercises within it, and I was able to go very, very deep just for the very first time I ever tried meditation. And so I was going into these different realms, these ethereal realms, and being able to kind of like hold these giant orbs of information. And I could actually feel it just ringing and uh, you know making all these sensations within my hands. As this happened, I would go to sleep at night, and I would be like in this non-physicalized type of classroom. And I would wake up the next morning knowing things I didn't know before. And so this happened uh, continuously. It still happens to this day, really. Uh, so it's really like I feel like I have about almost uh, 70 or 80 years worth of spiritual information shoved into me within a 70 or seven year time. So a lot of that really was the beginnings of just being able to start a science fiction novel. Uh, fortunately, of course, that, that novel that I was creating uh, is actually going to be turned into a TV series. So I'm actually working on a TV series uh, right now called The Inbound. And uh, more information information can be found on that as well, too, uh, on my Facebook as well. Uh, but uh, this is basically what uh, is coming together now. So just by starting with a science fiction novel and wanting to write this, this is what was responsible for a lot of my spiritual awakenings. I went from meditation to channeling. I started talking to a lot of people. In fact, Human Colony reminds me of one of my old uh, websites that I had called mm -hmm. Saviors of Earth uh, back in 2008. And we had a very large community of over 5,000 people. And we wow. had a lot of channelers, we had a lot of psychics, we had intuitives in that sense. And I learned a lot from a lot of those guys. But I basically took a, kind of an emerging consciousness with all of these different people. And I just kind of uh, took everything that they gave me. And I molded it into my own little learning ball, so to speak. And uh, started to develop myself through automatic writing at first. And it wasn't a drama that I channeled first. There was a few other different types of beings, a lot more collectives. Uh, one was, one was, yeah, one was Pleiadian Collective. Another one was the Lyra and Soul Collective Consciousness. In fact, I wrote a book, a small little free book, uh, online called The Lyra Earth Connection. I think people can still dig for that. But uh, that was when I was just really starting to cut my teeth into channeling. And a lot of the stuff I was still kind of, I was still going, you know, kind of adrift in certain ways, but I thought it was a good way just to get things started, to start a project, yeah. and really dedicate myself to the channeling aspect. So I don't really promote that book too much because uh, it was fun, but there, there's so much more information that comes through now. Uh, but it wasn't until a friend of mine, who was also a channel of uh, experience of eight years, uh, told me one night, and said, Brad, do you, there's a strong connection with you with Sirius. You know, you have a very strong connection with the Syrian energy. And uh, just a recommendation, I'm being told it would be good for you to go into a meditation state, do some automatic writing because there's someone there in Sirius that wants to talk to you. I said, okay. So I went into my usual state, into automatic writing, and uh, instantly, bam, a journalist came through. And so everything was so clear. It was probably the most clear channel I've ever had. Uh, and he was just so uh, informative, and he basically said, Brad, I'm a future version of you, 297 years in the future. I've come back at this time to assist you in uh, helping you spiritually evolve. And as you spiritually evolve, others will be spiritually evolving with you through the information that we're going to share together. Do you want to do this? And so that's what led into this particular type of aspect. I also had a uh, sighting of a craft shortly after that uh, that I actually summoned uh, from my balcony mm -hmm. and just saw this little uh, starlight just basically poof, shoot across the sky just after me saying a blessing. You know, yeah. saying, if there's anybody out there, please let me know. I'm not going crazy. I'm not going insane here. Please tell me that this is all real, right? And then, so as soon as that happened, poof, this thing just shoots right across the sky. And I said, oh, okay, there's a, there's a channeling confirmation right there. So yeah, uh, it, it was really very beautiful. Yeah, I get to, I've, I, I used to get a lot of visions from Atronis as well, too. There's times where he just appears in my room as an apparition, and he shows me light circuitry. And basically, these are uh, energetic adjustments so that I can receive a lot more information mm -hmm. on a universal scale. So I've had those uh, encounters twice already with him coming through. It's very cool when he does that. He just like uh, pops into the room, and he's like a, a silver, grayish kind of apparition. And he's actually see-through. You can actually see through him. You can see at the end of the wall, and he just appears. And he just comes in and is like, here, Brad, i got something to show you, right? And so he's showing me this palette of all this light circuitry that's coming through. And uh, that was a really cool experience. That happened uh, a little over a year ago. 
uh, and uh, happened not too long ago as well, too, I think another one about seven or eight months ago. And uh, so those were just profound experiences because that's the first time a journalist did that and just come into my room and say, I didn't even really say anything. You just like, here you go. Here's the, here's the sacred circuit. <laughs> right? Oh, you're so, ready for a crack. Yeah, exactly. And so it just kind of pops out. I was like, oh, that was cool. I'm going back to bed. Poof. Right? So, <laughs> so that's basically how, in a nutshell, it all began for me. I just I, I look at the entire spectrum. I don't look at just one thing. I'm just, I'm just wired that way. I look at I like the entire that. rainbow spectrum, yeah, of metaphysics. It's, it's like when you say at the start, you know, you're, you're a man with many hats. It's not yes, just yeah. this or <clears> that, you know, this, this yeah, that. A lot, of, a lot of my philosophy is I try to make things simple for other people. Uh, I basically do a lot of practical enlightenment in that way. So what mm -hmm. I do is I pull the ethereal clouds down and I attempt to bring that into material. And then I say, okay, what can I do for the science of the simple? to make this as easy to understand mm -hmm. as possible okay. for others. And so that's basically what it is. I, 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 pull, I pull in the ethers to ground it. Beautiful. Maria, did you want to say something? Maria? Yes, yes. Hi, Brad. Hello. Hi, everyone. It's good to actually talk to you and see you in person. I'm really glad. And I just want to thank you because you answered um, one of my questions that I've always been thinking about, you know, the twin flame, because people, mm -hmm. you, and, and spirit and also soul, we, you know, we can read a lot of stuff around, but there are so many information that conflicts, you know, with each other. Mm -hmm. And it is very, um, actually, I was happy when you said that, don't worry about the label, because that's how I, how I feel. Yeah. Uh, people, a lot of people, they think they only have one divine connection and as a romantic connection with one person and to me it's limitless we are limitless being we can make that connection with whoever or whomever when we make that decision to mm -hmm. yeah. that's how yeah. I feel <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it is well too. Like I used to think, oh, it's just you know, this one soulmate, and that's it, and you know, that's that's all there is to it. But really, it's all just based upon who you connect with in that way. Like I'm not seeing anybody yes. right now happy being single, but <laughs> where where I stood from, there was a lot of the idea of I was adopting a lot of those particular types of labels, and uh, saying that you know, there's oh my god, there's a twin flame coming, or there's a soulmate coming, etc. And the more you let go of those labels and just be in the resonance about how you connect together and enjoy the the presence and enjoy what you share with each other, you'll you'll see you'll share beneficial times, you'll share challenging times together. It's all meant to be in flux. And so this is what I've really come to realize is that uh, it's just other people. It's other people that are a very strong mirror reflection connection to you, and that they're in your life for a certain particular majority of reasons, not usually just one, but quite a few. So uh, to me, it's just really being able to enjoy the ride of where another person wants to take you. Exactly, and what we it is it is us <laughs> what we make out of each relationship. That's right. As, as, you know, as a soul on a soul level, two souls decide what to make out of it. Mm -hmm. It's up to us. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Much love. Much love too. Thank you. Brad, how do you determine? Um, what entities you choose to connect to, or they, do they just come to you and then you feel the energy? Yeah, uh, basically when I first started uh, connecting with Adronis, it's it's kind of like knowing a color in that particular way. You kind of know that this particular color is standing out very strong. That's kind of the equivalent of the feeling I get, is that uh, I know when Adronis' energy is coming through. Uh, it it's took a, quite a while. It took me a couple of months to really start to vocally channel him. So when he first came through, I saw the star of Sirius within my mind because I didn't know who I was going to connect with. And uh, he just came in instantly. It's kind of like the idea of saying, do you know how you feel when you're in love? You know, you, you just have that feeling. Right? You just know that, that that's the feeling that comes up. I know when I'm in love. Right? And so that's basically the idea. Do you know when you see the color blue? You just know when you see it. You know, it's right in front of you. So to me, that's basically how I've connected with Adronis' energy. Uh, I have connected, again, with other particular types of beings, but Adronis is basically kind of like the, the foreman uh, for the entire for my entire channeling experience. He does about 90% of the challenges. Um, not too long ago, I had the connection with Rayar, which is the feminine counterpart of Adronis, and she's just beautiful. Like they're just they're just this love and nurturing, very motherly type of yes. energy that comes. Yeah, through. I like I liked her energy a lot. I yeah, really so, enjoyed all those channelings. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I heard them I, I've, I've connected uh, I've connected with the Yael as well too, with the being known as Kalina. Uh, another one with uh, another Playa. The Playa is actually kind of a more newer civilization that's come in uh, that I started channeling back in 2012, I believe it was. And uh, they are the second generation of the hybrid races. You have the Yael, you have the Playa, and you have the Shikani. 
right? So Bashar's people. So basically the second generation was the one that I was connecting with, and the person that I connected with was known as Kidiyuki. And so he came through. He's kind of like an older, kind of funnier kind of energy. Yeah, maybe, yeah he, you know, my shoulders start yeah. moving and all that. Yeah. So he's, he's a lot more quirky in that particular way. But those would be kind of like the four main people that I've connected with as Adronis, Rayar, Kalina, and Hideyuki. I've also connected with what's known as the Consortium of Infinite Intelligence, but they have no personality whatsoever. It's almost like being in front of a computer screen and just getting binary data in that sense and right. having them come through. So if I'm putting any personality into it, it's for me, it's not for them. Uh, but there, there's incredible information. There's a lot of times, too, where I just connect with the universal mind, and this information comes through. So the idea of the entities that I channel are convenience, and uh, basically I am able to connect with the universal mind a lot more. I like to bring them through because they give me a lot more deeper perspective on certain things. Um, but altogether, primarily, I can just connect with uh, the universal consciousness, the universal mind, and start receiving information. This is why I call myself a reality whisperer, is being able to see what reality is attending to tell me. Okay, so then uh, for your sessions, um, when people do sessions with you, they can call up on any of those entities that you mentioned? Yeah, I mean, it's basically a choice. Uh, for people, I mean, 95% of the people that I talk to want to talk to Adronis because they're so used to him. You know, that's where the majority of the information comes through to my videos. Uh, sometimes they'll just want to talk to me as well, too. They'll just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. Uh, for Adronis, if it's Rayar, if it's Kalina, if it's Kidioki, if it's the Consortium of Infinite Intelligence, that's fine as well, too. So it's basically very free form. I basically say that when you have a session with me, it's, a, it's an open forum. So whatever you really want to talk about, if you want to learn channeling, if you want to learn how to do healing work, if you want to uh, you know, look more into your personal life, whatever it is, uh, there's no gold bar at every interview. This guy's learning. Okay. Um, does anyone have another question for him? And then I, you know, we'll let him go because he is a little bit under the weather. I just wanted to thank you, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. I think it's go okay. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that's always good. Yeah, um, I, I've just always been very, very uh, connected to the serious energy. I, I started with Bashar, and I found, I found you, Brad, shortly after I woke up, if you will, several years ago, and it was really kind of when you really sort of started channeling those beings that you just right. mentioned, and I was so excited because I felt so immediately connected to them, and I just wanted to thank you for all your work. It, it, it goes so far above and beyond just the entities that you channel. I enjoy all the classes that you've done, the the um, automatic writing types of classes, the energy writing, the classroom type of um, you know uh, videos that you put out. They're just so multidimensionally informative on so many different levels um, that it really accelerated me very quickly. Um, in, in because I was just sucking up all of this um, information like a sponge, and all of this, um, all of the uh, kind of classwork type of stuff, really um, put a lot of it into a more physical perspective for me. And my, th you know, a way to apply this information in a three-dimensional way that I w I didn't know how before. Mm -hmm. And so it was really very instrumental for me, and um, and I've been attending your free classes on Sundays, and I enjoy them a great deal. Um, I appreciate you. Re I really appreciate you doing this for the human collective, for those of us who would like to interact with you in that way, and and Adronis in a more personal setting. And so I really appreciate. I want to just you know extend my gratitude for you doing those classes as well. Um, I've really enjoyed them. So just overall, um, everything that you've brought to you know the human collective has been just amazing, and I just wanted to express my gratitude now that I, I can. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for that. And a lot of how my, my beginnings happened, like the very first channel I met, like I actually got to talk to you, was Magenta Pixie. So I'm not sure if a lot of you guys are familiar oh, with yeah. her. Oh, yeah, yes, very, um, yes. Yeah, very yeah. Her, and I are, her and I are pretty tight. We're good friends. And uh, I started doing a radio show just when I first started to awaken. And Magenta Pixie, I believe, was my first guest. Uh, so I had her a lot of, I watched a lot of her videos, and I thought they were just so beautiful. And she's just a wonderful person herself. So I had a lot of great experience with Magenta. The second channel I connected with was Blossom Goodchild. Right? Now, that was basically back in October 14th, 2008, 
where there was believed to be a gigantic ship that was going to be flying around, right? I was one of the one of the four leaders for that. So, oh my god, this is going to be so cool when this happens because I was just starting to wake up. And if if it was me now, I'm like, no, guys, sorry, it's not going to happen. But <laughs> back then, it was, oh my god, this is exciting. I'm just opening up to this new thing. It sounds so cool. Oh my god, extraterrestrial contact. Right? So that was the second channel that I met, and then thirdly after that, it was Daryl Anka, it was Bashar. Right? So, uh, and I watched a lot of the Bashar videos as well too, and it really helped me to understand. Oh my God, I, I would say Daryl Anka was really probably the biggest inspiration because he really gave it so much legitimacy uh, to it. Because I would see the way that he would connect, I would see the information that comes through with him, and uh, just the type of scientific and technical information. Because I'm a big fan of that. I love the idea of like going really technical and getting really scientific and and going in that. It's hard for me to translate at times because mm -hmm. it's very, very sophisticated. But that's what I love. I love I love people who challenge me in that way. Like when they say, oh, Brad, can you tell me what was happening on uh, uh, Draconis right now or the Draco star system or what's happening here, right? And so I get into these states and I say, okay, here's what we can pull up, right? So to me, that's very, very exciting. But I love a lot of the, you know, the feeling, philosophical aspects as well too. But it was Daryl really in that sense who uh, really, really inspired me to connect more to the challenge state. He really gave it a a very strong essence, uh, and I had the privilege to talk to him quite a few times. And in fact, uh, for me to channel uh, Adronis in the state of vocal cat channeling uh, is actually thanks to Daryl Anka for that, because I had conversations with him, I talked to him, I asked him exactly how he connected with Bashar and what he did, and how it all started for him. And so I, I have this one video uh, on my channel uh, where I actually talked to Daryl Anka on the radio show. And I had a few other emails with him back and forth as well, too, and he gave me some really great advice. And that is really what brought me more inspiration to channel Adronis vocally than any other. So it was a big thanks to him as well, too, with a lot of the stuff he's been doing for over 30 years. Uh, and there's always a lot of appreciation there. But it's just a, it's, it's been an incredible journey. A lot of how I've sharpened myself uh, when I was first beginning as well, too, wasn't just through meditation. It was through the solfeggio frequencies. So if you guys really want to know how you can sharpen yourself as a channel, start the self ego frequencies if you haven't started uh, and do that for about four to six weeks. I actually have another website that's called self tones.com. Again, that's just a free website. You guys can download uh, the self ego tones there as well too and I think there's even some videos on it. I haven't checked out the, cha the site in quite a while uh, but I, I use the self ego tones and I would just go into meditative states and I would just let the self ego frequencies uh, play. I do it for about an hour a day for about you know three or four weeks and I could definitely feel a difference. It was like my body felt more like a crystal. It felt like more of a crystalline connection. Uh, mm -hmm. So using the idea of sound healing as well too is really, really great if you want to become a channel, if you want to enhance your psychic ability as well too. That's what got me started. And uh, it's really, really uh, powerful. If you can handle it, there's a lot of people who says they try it for about 10 minutes and all of a sudden they're getting a splitting headache or they're getting a neck ache or they're getting you know maybe indigestion problems. And I said that's all part of symptoms. Those are basically energies, it, yeah. energies within yourself that have been stagnant and they're attempting to uplift themselves or attempting to be purged. So again, that's a natural feeling if you get that. But uh, I would highly recommend using the self ego tones. Is that the yeah. same as? Uh, I'm sorry. Is that the same as yeah. binaural tones? Uh, it's have a have a good strength to them, yes, but they're very different. The the solfeggio yeah. scale is basically moving up to different uh, hertz in frequency, right? So it's kind of like a rainbow effect in that way. Uh, binaural beats are again are good. They basically they work to brain synchronization. That's a lot of what they do. With the solfeggio frequencies, they're actually working with DNA, right? So they're actually working together with your DNA. They're working together with your energy body. They work to crystallize yourself. So basically, areas that are looking to be crystallized that may be stagnant can create these ideas of symptoms. Right, so they're very, very different from uh, what's known as the binaural or the isochronic tones as well. Do you have any particular ones that you want us to, you know, you can, listen? You can check out my website. Go to selfagiotones.com, and uh, that will. There's quite a few different options there as well too. Uh, there's ones that are intense, and there's ones that aren't so bad. But uh, if you go there, <laughs> you'll find. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then there's ones that are more subtle and more mellow, and then there's ones that are like really, really intense. Right, so I've I've done the intense ones to start. And I was like, oh, okay, let's, let's go. You know, sometimes I would get a bit of a headache myself, but I said, no, oh, come on, let's keep doing it, right? Let's keep going, right? Because I was so passionate in doing this. Like, I, I eat, drink, live, breathe this. And, uh, you know, this is how I'm able to do this for my living, uh, doing this full time. And I can't imagine doing another job. So <laughs> I'm done with the idea of the 9 to 5. I've been out of that arena for a couple of years now, and I don't plan on going back. So basically just being able to have this freedom to, to channel and uh, to be a phone for an extraterrestrial is my full-time job, right? It's my full-time work. To me, that's exciting. 
So uh, I'm just enjoying every step of the way. Well, we're glad you quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years back, yeah. yeah. I'd like to take a moment. If we can uh, have a closing blessing, if somebody would like to step up for that, and then if we can uh, have the closing announcements, and then we'll let Brad get underway, because I know he's slightly fatigued, and I'd like to let him uh, have his rest. Uh, would somebody like to uh, come up for the blessing, please? Well, you know we all would, so if Sabrina would like to go, <laughs> yeah. you go right ahead. Because <laughs> you know Sarah. I do, you know Sarah yeah. does, we all do, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe we'll have three then. That'd be great. Um, no, I, I don't want to take that long, so what doesn't one person do? So, uh, Wendy, would you like to do it, Ian? It's your birthday. It's your birthday, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yes, thank you. How exciting. Okay, <laughs> I'll, do a bir I'll do a birthday blessing. Sorry, Sarah, next time. <laughs> That'd be great. Thanks. <coughs> oh, thank you all for being here today. This has been one of the best sun cycles I've ever had, and I'm very grateful to be with you all today. Um, thank you, Brad, for being here, um, especially on my birthday, and that you've been a great big part of my awakening. So, Nikalia Satoyo Kolea Kapaya Nanaya Satoya Nayolua Katia Palea Noa Kayokura Kasi Similia katolio kwa palia kataliana ya satika. Konuala, sotolo kushia kaliama. Malakatia, kayoko e salia katolua mayawa. Lina alura hisyamilea katoko. Koyoputo koko e shesihi. Mihaya, amola katia kalayina. Makura kasitle ya kapo yayayayina. Polio kura kapo koko sotoluasi. Nitia aya ili, ina maili akotoha, iliana noko akapala kotoloko asiatihi, alohi maili akotoloko shishia, pliana i ili akotoloko, shikatoko yasasiana yisotoko, shikani ayuko esoto ya yali akotoko apopoto yusu, shihayukaha, liya yisati liya, makoya kasaha, tonahi lura shina, kono makoko yasoila, Hikia sahi, mahalo kukoria sha, ninani ina oku, anadi kautulu kwa shipua, nitaya, haliato yusua, makia takitua, hamayiso, namaste, mahala kashoka yamiana. Namaste. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. Karen, are you nearby? Yes, I am. Um, just the announcement, and thank you, Wendy, for the blessing. Um, that for Tuesday, Brad will be on my show about oneness on Pyramid One Network from 6 to 7 p.m. EST. So if you want to, go to uh, www.pyramidonenetwork.com, and you can join into the show. And if you have questions for Brad or Adronis, or maybe he'll channel somebody else, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens, what he feels like doing. But just Tuesday at uh, 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I'd also like to remind everybody uh, of Brad's events. He has uh, the Adronis Advancement Classroom free webinar this coming Sunday at 12 p.m. noon Pacific on his website. And then uh, on December 13th, he has Unleash the Extraordinary Live Channeling event in Irvine, California at the Temple of Light. Again, that's December 13th. Um, his website and uh, channeling link is available on the events page for all of those that would like to... Uh, get those links and, uh, and contact Brad. Brad, do you have anything else? Uh, yeah, just again, uh, you guys can check out the website, and uh, it was really, really great to be with all of you this morning. Uh, usually I don't get up this early. That's a funny thing. I'm usually asleep to about like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. <laughs> so it was a bit of a stretch for me, but that's okay. I got up at 6 o'clock this morning, and so it was fun. But uh, I had a really great time with everybody. And uh, again, if you guys want to find out more about the TV series that I'm creating right now, The Inbound, uh, you can go to, i um, probably just going to type it on the chat room here, but it's www.theinboundtv.com. And uh, there's also a Facebook page that you guys can go to as well, too. It's just facebook.com slash the inbound, and you can check that out. So basically, this TV show is based on a lot of the information that I've received for the past seven years. Uh, it is like a science fiction uh, space fantasy, 
it's kind of like a Star Wars in that way. So for guys who are interested in that, uh, we're looking to just get a crowdfunding campaign right now uh, and getting it started. Uh, so we're going to be putting up some more material. There's a lot of concept art that's happening. Uh, we're hopefully looking to get into production around the springtime of 2016 uh, to begin the pilot episode and start that off. Uh, but it's going to be really professionally made. There's going to be the amazing special effects. We're going to have some really good actors as well, too, that are going to be in it. And uh, really, in a nutshell, it's all about the star seats. And that's really what the inbound represents. It's actually a name for, for star seats. So there's a, it's going to be a really, really exciting series. So I'm really putting together a lot of effort to making this happen. Uh, but again, I'll just need a lot of help from people. Uh, and we're going to be using a crowdfunding campaign and getting uh, the money that we need to begin the first episode. So, Is guys, you get you you can guys go ahead and check that out. Uh, again, theinboundtv.com or facebook.com slash theinbound. So if there's any producers listening, Brad. Yeah, that'd be good Brad. too. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure if you want to be at the forefront of the, the, the media that's going to be coming up in the next few decades, this is where it's going to be starting, guys. So get in there quick. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming to today's webinar. Thank you for being you. Much love to you all, and we will see you again next week.